Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm excited. Again, beautiful week. Uh, it was really hot this week, um, and I don't have any air conditioning in either of my vehicles or my house. Um, but to be honest, I love the heat. And so I, I was thinking about complaining, and then I realized it's going to snow soon. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll take the heat. If I, if, I, if I have to pick one, for me, I'll personally pick the heat every single time. But I want to welcome you uh, to church. So excited. Uh, you're with us today. I pray that you're enjoying your summer. I pray that you're enjoying the weather. I pray that you're uh, getting away. I pray that you're connecting. I pray that you're resting. I pray that you're uh, talking to Jesus. I just pray that this summer is exactly what you need it to be because um, we're all in different seasons and different things that are going on in our lives. But last week, uh, we started a, a new series called Questions God Asks Us. And we're going through some of the questions through Scripture uh, that God asked his people or asked of his people. And I believe that some of these questions that God asked in the scriptures, God might be asking us today, you know, all these years later, some of the, the questions and the importance that these questions might have in our lives. And last week we started uh, at the be very beginning. Uh, one of the first questions, you know, asked in the Bible is this, where are you? When Adam and Eve had eaten the fruit, God's walking in the garden says, where are you? And I encourage you, if you missed it, you can go on our YouTube page and, and listen to it. And we, we looked at what we do uh, when we're hiding and how we can bring ourselves out of the shadows into the light. When we're hiding um, from God or hiding from each other, how we can start to become more vulnerable and transparent. And today we're going to go through uh, the next question that God asked us, one of the next questions that God asked. So we'll find it again in Genesis chapter 4. Uh, verse 1, it says this, now Adam, and Eve, uh, uh, now Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. Now every time I think about uh, Eve uh, getting pregnant like, like, and being pregnant, I think about this was the first time they'd ever experienced anything like this. You're like, you know how confusing, like if you've ever been out of birth, you know how confusing birth can be? Imagine you don't even know what's happening, right? Like, why am I getting bigger? What is happening? I just, anyway, that's just where my mind goes when I think about this story. It's just like they never experienced this before at all. In fact, she says, I've gotten a man with the help of the Lord, right? They're still trying to figure it out. Um, but then, and then it goes on, and then the course of time came brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. This question that God asks Cain in this moment is, why are you angry? It's a great question that God asks him because Cain brings his offering, Abel brings his offering, God loves Abel's offering and is not really a fan of the offering that Cain brought. It's a, this is a great question, why are you angry, why? Because anger isn't an isolated issue to Adam and Eve and their children all those years ago. How many of y'all know that anger is still running rampant in our society, in our culture, in our homes, in our businesses, at work, at home? Anger is running rampant in our lives, anger. I think we all have a unique history or a unique story when it comes to anger. Maybe anger that we've had or anger that we've experienced, the wrath or anger of other people. It's not an isolated issue but I think anger is definitely facing our world, anger in politics and in our families, anger in our churches. I think it's a real problem 
that we are facing still today, all these years later, I think God might still be asking the church or God might still be asking you and still asking me, why are you angry? I want you to listen to this story and see if maybe you can relate to this story. As a man, he's sharing his story. He says, I've always had anger, but lately I've come to see it is a real problem. I'll get mad about almost everything, and then I fixate on whatever got me angry. I'm fuming mad, and it's the little things that tick me off. It seems like not one day can go by without me being angry at something. I feel like I hurt the people around me when I blow up, and doing, doing that makes me feel bad about myself. I've always disliked angry people, and yet it seems like everything I don't like about them I am becoming. I don't want people to think that I am mean because I can't control my anger, but I really don't know where it came from. I don't know how to deal with these bad feelings. I'm angry. I don't know how to fix myself, and I'm scared that I'll, it'll always be with me. And he ends with the question, when will I be free? Maybe it's a story that we can relate to of anger in our own lives that keeps coming up, and, and it seems like it's almost getting worse and we almost are at a point where like, I don't even know if there's possible for me to be healed from this. Or I don't even know if it's possible for joy and peace and to come back into the picture. That anger has kind of taken control of our lives, right? Because what does the anger do? It, it leads us to hurt the people we love or maybe it, it causes us to hurt the possessions we own, right? You know, sometimes we've broken something because we're angry. We've done something. We said something we regret. Because we're angry, and I think if we were honest with each other and honest with ourselves, we would realize that anger has affected our lives, and it's also affected the people around us. See, in Proverbs chapter 29, 22, see, Proverbs is filled with wisdom when it comes to anger, but it says this, an angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sin. This is the snowball effect, I think, when it comes to anger, is it starts, it start, might start small, it might start with a little fight, but how many know, as soon as it starts rolling, it can be really hard to stop. When anger starts controlling us and start, it starts being the only real emotion we feel, how many you know, it can start to build and it can cause us to say and do things we never even thought or imagined we could do. It can almost take control of our life. It can be harder to control and harder to carry, and it can become harder to stop. It might start small and innocent, but as it builds and it gets bigger, it can be much harder to stop. And when it's building, the, it has the ability to pull us into all sorts of behavior that is detrimental and dangerous to our relationships and to ourselves. We all have a unique story when it comes to anger. And in fact, anger is contagious. And we see this in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24 to 25, right? It says, don't befriend angry people or associate with hot-tempered people. Why? Or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul. You know, this isn't like a sugar-coated thing written in scripture. This is like, anger can be very dangerous. It can be contagious. See, our anger is contagious. You ever get around angry people and start getting real angry as well? You ever show up to work, you're having a great day, but you, but you know your one coworker who's always angry is about to walk through the door and it's gonna change the entire atmosphere? How your joy can be almost taken away in a moment when you start to see other people's anger or other people's anger towards your boss or other people's anger towards your coworkers or other people's anger towards your spouse or towards your kids, it can start to become contagious because angry people create angry environments. Or maybe we're angry about our boss or we're angry about our spouse or we're angry about our children, angry about all the things that come up. See, the reality is that, again, angry people create angry environments. What this means is that angry couples create angry marriages. And what happens if we have angry marriages and angry homes? We're going to start raising angry kids. And if we start raising angry kids, you know what we're doing? We're creating a society of just angry people. And I know you've seen this because we see anger all around us. I was just in a store the other day, and a lady gets a call on customer service. If you were customer service I'm so, I'm so proud of you. It's not easy, right? 
This person is just getting belittled and yelled at on the phone because she can't take an order because that's not her job. And she's like, hey, go to this spot. They're yelling at her. I can hear it, like, through the phone. Like, it's like, you know, you watch a TV show, you know, wah, wah, you know, like, that's what I hear. I'm like, that person's not happy. We see anger wherever we go. And see, see, God asks Cain this very important question, why are you angry? See, I think this question is designed to push us to clarity and a space to diagnose actually why. I know in my life there's been moments where I'm angry and I don't even know why. You ever have that? You just wake up, you're like, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. You know, they say that. It's like, I'm just angry today. I don't know why. But it's time for us, I think, to take a step back. And if anger is a real problem, to ask ourselves or let God ask us this question, why are you angry? See, when we're angry, oftentimes the last thing on our minds is figuring out why. You know what the first response often is? Talking a little bit louder. Being a little bit more aggressive with our pantry door and our drawers. Being a little bit more aggressive. We have this pent up energy and we feel like we got to get rid of it some way. It might come out as yelling. Sometimes it comes out as cleaning. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I know Beth's angry with me sometimes, and I'm like, oh, she's cleaning, like, real well right now, you know? <laughs> I'm like, this isn't good. <laughs> I'm about to get in trouble, right? And then I realized I was the one supposed to do the cleaning. I'm like, uh-oh. This is dangerous, right? I talk about the danger, right? It may come out as breaking something. You know, we've probably had moments where we broke something in our anger. And you see this oftentimes in the next generation, and I was included in this when it comes to video games. I was playing an online game of Madden one time. I was about 16. I got super angry. And my, contro my controller is somehow shattered into a million pieces. I was angry. We have moments where something might get broken or we, we start yelling and we start to just have this energy. We got to try and get rid of it somehow. See, I think this question, why are you so angry? It's designed to slow us down in order to actually think. In order to actually understand why we are angry. Because oftentimes we don't actually know why. We don't know the root cause. We might see, yeah, my kid spilled the milk, but to be honest, there's got to be something deeper than that going on. I think it's designed to slow us down. When God asks Cain, why are you so angry? This is Cain's response, literally the next verse. It says this, Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and then when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother and killed him. The next verse. So God's like, hey, why are you so angry? Cain's like, I'll show you. It's so interesting to me that, that they literally went from like eating a fruit to killing each other real quick. Right? The sins we see recorded in early scripture, there's not many. They went from eating a fruit to, to murder quick. It just shows that really how broken we are as humans. And also, though, how anger can actually affect us. Now, of course, this is an extreme example. It's a strong example, but you have to remember, again, how many sins happened before this? Not many. See, I truly believe that if Cain had responded to God's, quest, God's question by trying to actually diagnose and actually try and understand why he was angry, the story could have ended up very different. And I think it's the same in our own lives that we all have stories where anger came up and we did the wrong thing. But what if we had the self-control? What if we had the discipline to take a step back and ask ourselves or hear God asking the question, why are you so angry? And have that conversation first. See, imagine Cain's situation, right? He gives God the offering. And God doesn't like it, but he loves what Abel brought. The, you'd feel jealous. You might even feel like you have this righteous anger of like, why was mine not good enough? I worked hard. I did what I was supposed to do. I thought I gave you what you wanted. I worked hard. Why do you hate it so much? Why do you not like it so much? And I think this brings us to one of the main reasons we get angry as people. 
And maybe if he would have opened his ears and tried to answer the question God was asking him, he could have found a better outcome. But I think one of the biggest reasons we get angry is because of insecurity. See, when we're insecure, anytime someone questions us, anytime someone corrects us, anytime someone disagrees with us, we feel like we're being attacked as people. Our identity is being attacked. So what do we do? We respond with anger to try and protect ourselves and to justify what we've done or who we are. I think if I look back at some of my most angry moments, for me, a lot of it stems from a place of insecurity in who I am. So when someone questions it or someone disagrees or someone tells me it's wrong, I feel like I'm so attacked. I gotta protect myself. My most angry moments come from spaces where I didn't know what to do. I had done everything I could, but it wasn't enough. And so what does that make me feel? It feels like I'm not enough. I think if we look back at a lot of our moments, you know what I think a lot of our anger stems from is a place of insecurity. See, Cain was insecure. Why? Because his gift wasn't good enough. His gift wasn't enough. And I mean, look at his brother. Like, how come you love him? What about me? I think if we want to combat anger... It starts from realizing that we need to be confident in who God created us to be and that his grace is sufficient for us. That in our weakness, he makes us strong. I want to protect myself. And I feel the best way to do that is anger. When in reality, the best thing I can do is to take a step back and talk to God. Have the conversation, answer that question. See, this is what it says in Proverbs, a fool is quick-tempered, but a wise person stays calm when insulted. It takes a confident, secure person that when we're insulted, we can still be calm. It's not easy. It's not saying you don't need to stand up for yourself or whatever, but it's saying stay calm. When someone starts going after you or you feel like sometimes it's even when our spouse says something super small but we take it so personal that it attacks our identity i know there's times as a as a father where i'll make a mistake and i feel so broken about who i am that what the emotion that comes out is anger not because i'm angry with my kids but because i'm angry with myself and i don't know what to do I'm angry because I'm insecure sometimes as a father or I'm insecure sometimes as a pastor or as a husband. And so what it comes out as is anger, even though it's anger more towards me and me not loving myself and who God created to me to be as much as I need to. That even when we're insulted, even when our kids are having tantrums and saying things to us that they don't mean, we can stay calm. Why? Because we're confident in who we are and we're confident in who God created us to be. We know who he created us to be. We realize that just because we fail as fathers and just because we fail as mothers, you know what? That doesn't make us a failure. In fact, in the Bible, it says that we're the child of, of the king and we're, we're royalty. Read through Ephesians. Realize that just because we fail doesn't make us a failure. You know what? I want to I encourage all of us today when it comes to anger. You might have a rough history with anger. You might have a rough past when it comes to anger. Maybe towards your family or to your kids or to your parents. And maybe at work you have a rough history when it comes to anger. But I want to encourage you you can get the healing and you can get the forgiveness you need. Why? Because God's grace is sufficient for you. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Each time he said this. This is when Paul is talking about he's got the thorn and he's trying to figure it out. Talking to God and he says, he asked him. And each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. Now I find that fascinating, best. It's not like works good 
works great. It says, my power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. His grace is sufficient for you. You might have a rough history with anger, but that's not the end of the story. See, I think when God asks us the question, why are you angry? Why are you so angry? It's a question we cannot ignore. I think some of us, we've been ignoring the anger in our lives for so long. We're stuffing it down. We have a, we have a tantrum, you know, we have an explosion every once in a while, but we've kind of managed it, but we're just kind of stuffing it down. I stop them to stop looking at the symptom, which is anger, and start diving deeper. It might be time to diagnose as to why we are so angry. And I think the biggest thing that I want to get across to us today is that some of us need healing when it comes to anger. Some of us need healing because of anger we experience. And some of us need healing when it comes to anger we've shown we need healing I heard someone say this once especially about men he said men don't like to feel depressed so they get angry so this men don't like to feel sad so what do they do they get angry men don't like to feel like they've lost control so they get angry men don't like to feel disrespected so they get angry men don't feel like to feel, want to feel insecure so what do we do we get angry Men don't like to feel anxious, so we get angry. Oftentimes, anger is more of a symptom of something else. It's us responding to how we're feeling, and it's almost a way of us trying to protect ourselves from how we're feeling. See, we don't like to be uncomfortable in our emotions. So often, it comes out in anger, because it's what we do best, right? That's what I know. I know how to be angry. But the root cause is something much deeper and much tougher to spot. We need healing. I think we deeply need healing when it comes to anger in our lives. I know I do. I'm sure all of us have moments and stuff. We need healing. Divine healing. Healing from our past healing from the words that were spoken over us, healing from trauma, healing from fear, healing from depression, and healing from anxiety. We need healing. See, if we want to live happy, live in healthy and happy homes and have good, healthy environments, we need to start letting go of anger. I think sometimes we like to justify our anger, that it's righteous anger, and I would see probably, for me, 90% of the, the anger in my life is not righteous anger. I like to justify it sometimes. I like to try and figure out how I can make it righteous. Sometimes even what I'll do is I'll take a scripture and I'll kind of twist it to make me feel more righteous about the anger. This is what it says in Romans 12 too. About it says this, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Or some translations say, by, 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 by changing your, your mind. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. See, when we go into an environment that's angry, we're not supposed to conform. We're not supposed to just follow suit. We're not supposed to just let that be our life as well. That when we go to an angry environment, our job, if we don't like it, is to either leave or make it different. If you, if you go to an angry spot at work, rather than just keep complaining about how angry it is, what if you were just to leave or make it better? That we're not supposed to conform that God changes the way we think he he rewires our brains to be different that when everyone else is angry we can be joyful that when everyone else is angry we can have peaceful homes 
don't conform to what we see. Let God change us from the inside out so that we can bring the light into the places that need it. In fact, we're not supposed to be like the world. We gotta be part of bringing joy into the room and bringing love into the room and grace into the room. We can't give in to what we're seeing and let it seep into who we are. We gotta let the light go into the darkness. We gotta make a difference and we gotta be different. We're gonna find healing and find peace and find joy. Do you know what's hard sometimes is joy. It's not always easy to be joyful. It's not always easy to walk into a room and sense the environment is pretty broken and pretty angry and be joyful. It's not always easy. But we got to be confident in who God created us to be. We're not here to impress each other. We need to stop trying to impress each other. To be honest, when I come up here, I'm not trying to impress you at all. That's like the last thing I think about is impressing you. We're not here to impress, but we're here to serve. We're here to be here for each other in our hardest moments. That when we're angry, rather than be ashamed and run away from people and go to isolation, what if we went into connection and community? What if we were open and honest? What if anger, which all of us have as a part of our life, what if we weren't so ashamed of it and we're willing to talk about it and find the healing we need? What if we became more confident and less insecure, know who God created us to be, so I'm not trying to impress you anymore. I'm trying to serve you. But if that was our heart and that was our mission and that was our mind and that was our idea. See, God created us for such a time as this. You know, our takeaway today is gonna blow your mind. Is this, why are you so angry? <laughs> Why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? Is it something that happened when you were a child? Is it insecurity? Is it trauma? Is it fear? Is it depression or anxiety or sadness that's coming out as anger because you don't know what to do? I want to encourage you to take some time to reflect. Maybe take some time to peel back the layers and understand, why am I so angry? You ever have someone ask you that question? Why are you so angry? And you're like, because I'm angry, right? It's like, it just makes you more mad. That's kind of what happened with Cain. He's like, why are you so angry? He's like, I'll show you angry, you know? <coughs> why are you so angry? I encourage you to take time in that conversation. Don't do what Cain did, which was let his anger take control and the snowball kept going. And but let God help you. Let God speak to you. Let him comfort you and let him forgive you. Because I think one of the biggest things that's facing us when it comes to anger is that because of how we responded and because of what we said and because of what we done, I think that that's eating us to the core. Some of the things we've said to our kids or said to our spouse or done to our kids, done to our spouse, we're like, man, so much regret. And now we're not justifying those actions, but God says, I forgive you. He doesn't say it's okay. Like I've told you before, we tell Jane, when, when I do something to, when, when she does something, and she, I say, hey, say, you have to apologize. And she apologizes. I don't say, it's okay. I say, I forgive you. Because it's not okay. But do you know what's so beautiful? Is that even though it's not okay, God still loves us and forgives us anyways.
Take time in that conversation. Let him speak to you. I just want to pray for us today. I want to pray for healing for us today. Because I think we need it. I want to pray for forgiveness for us today. So why don't you pray with me? God, I thank you. Number one, that you came and showed us what love is. That you showed us how to live. You showed us how to forgive. That you show us how to walk with peace and joy. God, I pray for each and every single person sitting here watching online today. God, I don't know their story when it comes to anger, but what I do know is your story of redemption. And God, I pray that you meet each and every one of us in a place where we can realize we are forgiven, that we're so loved by you, that you care so deeply about us, that you sent Jesus to die instead of me. God, I pray for healing. God, I pray for healing when it comes to our own insecurities. I pray for healing when it comes to trauma in our lives that we're still trying to overcome. God, I pray for healing in our hearts and in our minds for you to change the way we think. That you're making us a new creation. God, I pray that you help us control our anger. That even when people are insulting us, we can stay calm. God, I pray for me. In my own life, the same prayer, God. I pray for healing for me. And healing for all my friends. Because we need it. God, help us be confident. Help us know we're loved. Help us realize that just because we've made mistakes over and over again, just because of the anger in our life, God, that doesn't disqualify us from relationship with you. God, bring healing in our lives. In Jesus' name.